So Todd, I want to talk to you today uh, about an important shift in negotiation, and that's making the shift from two-party to multi-party negotiation. And the moment that we're talking about adding more parties in negotiation with the potential for building coalitions amongst parties, we're then starting to talk about the importance of sequencing in potential allies, adversaries, and recruitables into the negotiation process. The notion of sequencing is embedded in a larger idea that I like to call negotiating by design. And what it means is giving careful, deliberate, intentional thought to thinking about where I want to be at the end of this negotiation. So it's about beginning with the end in mind. And it's about thinking very hard about this notion of getting compliance with my specific requests from a range of uh, actors, constituents, who may have very different ideas and resources than I do in terms of marshalling consensus in the direction of a multi-stakeholder agreement. What I'm interested in understanding uh, in this process of negotiating by design is how we sequence into the process actors, uh, issues, and resources in a way that creates momentum building, in a way that generates new opportunities as we negotiate, but equally important, minimizes vulnerability and blocks the potential for spoilers uh, to undermine the negotiation process. Interesting. Is there generally a right way to approach this sequencing of the actors, issues, resources, in terms of, say, right. most difficult or recalcitrant uh, through to the easiest or the most likely I think allies? This is a very important question because when you think about this through the prism of negotiating by design, what one should be thinking about is not the standard linear approach, which involves, I go to all my friends, read that as the low-hanging fruit first, and then subsequently find recruitables and deal with my adversaries last. In my own view, this is a recipe for having one's negotiation taken hostage and a nonlinear design uh, would suggest that I quickly compete with adversaries, attract potential recruitables to the process, and then along the way try to bring adversaries on board. But if I wait too long and only deal with my allies first, I won't have any leverage without the help of recruitables to bring potential adversaries on board. Um. You've talked about this, the opportunity for spoilers, for example. Um, what do you do when the sequencing has gone wrong? That is, when there is a blocking coalition that's emerged, or uh, when just things aren't going well in terms of the sequence? So critical to this process is a notion uh, that I think uh, comes from the physical sciences of having a dynamic view of a series of interactions that can continuously be reset. That part of thinking in a design fashion in negotiation means not only never accepting the game as given, uh, but like an artist uh, molding the clay, continually tries to refashion the parties at the table by learning about the barriers you confront. And one does that by engaging in a significant pre-negotiation process of discovery, of informal conversations, where one learns about the challenges that you're going to face in the negotiation. Often when people look back on a negotiation, like looking at an accident, a car crash, a failure, they can quickly point to where the difficulties were in the negotiation. My argument is that some of these, not all of them, might be anticipated in advance. Interesting. So it sounds like what you're suggesting is rather than taking a more ad hoc or bringing it approach, um, you want to have some intentionality, as you say, designed 
to this. Are there elements of the design that are maybe more um, tangible, like in terms of uh, where you meet parties, uh, where you seat the parties, and so on? I think that if one takes the notion of design seriously, that you are concerned about the table itself, you're concerned about where you're seating people, you're sensitive to cross-cultural issues, you're concerned about the time of day uh, at which people will be at their best. You are concerned about the flow and sequencing of the conversation. So the setup of the negotiation is important because the setup, that process will go a long way to helping people get ready to change their minds and comply with your requests. So yeah, it sounds like that really what this comes down to is design such that things are going your way. Is that right? And how can we take advantage of that? Right. And so if you think of negotiation as a system of interactions, the goal is to set up a series of moves that are cumulative, to set up a series of issues in players in a way where we create a so-called tipping point of momentum because a number of key players have already agreed and have bought into certain propositions, uh, certain aspects of agreement that make it increasingly difficult for later players not to participate in the agreement. Design at its core is a strategy of creating lock-in in the direction of generating the yesable proposition.